Whether you're in a field of science or engineering, the way that you get work done, or the way in science that you learn more about the world and the phenomenon that exists around you, is through experiments. Uh, the same thing in engineering. If you're trying to fulfill a human need and solve uh, an engineering problem, you will use experiments. And so, um, in this lecture, we're going to define the components of a valid experiment using an example of airbags and crash dummies. And then after that, I'm going to give you guys a chance to identify the, the variables in another experiment by yourself. When setting up an experiment, there are a lot of things you kind of have to pay attention to and think through before you actually start experimenting. I think in middle school, when we, when we get excited about experiments, we just want to go and start testing right away. But the truth of the matter is that to get a good experiment, one that actually tells you something that's worthwhile, you have to really think through what you're doing. So let's look at this um, crash dummies example. Let's just say we were, you know, back in the day, we were the first people trying out airbags. And we were going to see if airbags really do keep people safe. So we're going to design an experiment that tests the effects of airbags on um, the impact a dummy receives in a crash. So to do that, we got to really think through it. How many things could affect the impact that this dummy receives? I mean, think about that. How many things could actually affect the impact that this dummy receives? I mean, we could have the speed of the car, of course, um, the direction that the car is traveling, whether it's coming in at an angle or a straight on, um, the driver, you know, how they're driving. Could be the um, could be the surface of the road, you know, whether it's smooth or rough, or if that's changing. There are so many things that could affect this experiment, and so. We, when we make an experiment, we want to narrow it down to just two things. One thing affecting another. Because if we involve more things in it, we're not going to really be able to make sense of that. It's going to be really hard to understand. And so um, to start off, we need a control group and an experimental group. And in this case, our control group would be um, an airbag or a, a car without any airbag in it whatsoever. There would be no airbag. And so... That would be sort of our standard for comparison or kind of our normal. That's what a control group is. It's, it's, it's the normal group. It's a standard for comparison. So write that down. It's a standard for comparison. It's your normal. The experimental group, on the other hand, is the fun group. That's the one you give the experimental drug to. It's the one that you, you know, in this case, it's the group or the car with an airbag. That's the fun group. It's our prototype. And then after that, when you guys kind of nail down your control group and experimental group, you got to think through your variables because, like I said, there's a lot of other variables that can kind of affect things that you don't necessarily want to. So the two variables that you narrow it down to, those are your independent and dependent variables. The independent variable is the one that you are manipulating. It's also called the I do variable. The I do variable because that's the one that you as a scientist or an engineer are manipulating and in this case it's the the airbag okay the airbag is the independent variable that's our prototype and then the dependent variable in this case is the impact that this dummy is going to receive the one thing to note is that the dependent variable depends on the independent variable the dependent variable depends on the independent variable see the impact that the dummy receives isn't going to um, change unless you know, we manipulate the airbag. I mean, the airbag, um, whether there is an airbag or not, is what's affecting the impact that this dummy receives. That's kind of what we're testing. And so that's that's those two things. Those are those two things. But the last thing that we need to look at are constants. And that was when I was talking about, like, speed and the direction that the car is traveling and all these other things. We don't want those variables to kind of play into this experiment. We don't want to test those things right now yet. So we're going to keep those things as constant as possible. Every single trial that we do, we're going to keep the car moving at 35 miles an hour. Every trial we do, the car is going to go in a straight, head-on collision. Every trial we do, we're going to make sure all the debris is cleared off the ground and that the, the ground is the same every single time. And so those are the constants. And honestly, probably one of the, the most tasking parts of being an engineer or scientist is figuring out what the constants are and creating this sort of controlled environment where, where one thing is affecting in another thing. Now that you guys have seen an experiment, you know all the pieces that go into it, you've got some notes on it, let's see how you do with this experiment. 
Well, I hope that was helpful. I look forward to doing all kinds of experiments with you this year. Take care. See you later.